Are you intrigued by the life stories of Hollywood's adult film actresses as they faced public scrutiny? Marilyn Chambers, an emblematic figure in the adult film industry, struggled relentlessly to earn acknowledgement from the public. Her life was fraught with perils, stemming from the public's limited perspective on the film industry in the 1970s. Despite enduring numerous challenges, Marilyn, in the twilight of her existence, still found no tranquility. To discover the true tale of Marilyn Chambers and the tragic conclusion to her journey, be sure not to overlook this video. Marilyn Chambers began her journey from a quaint childhood in Westport, Connecticut. Raised in a family with a mother who was a nurse and a father employed in advertising, Marilyn grew up with two older siblings, a brother and a sister. Her brother held a notable position as the keyboardist in the 1960s band The Remains, which earned the privilege of opening for the Beatles during their final U.S. tour in 1966. During her teenage years, Marilyn harbored dreams of making it big in the entertainment industry, specifically as an actress. At the tender age of 16, she took her first steps towards realizing her aspirations by delving into the world of modeling. Her determination and passion for acting led her to take unconventional measures, including the forgery of her mother's signature, to escape the confines of school and travel by train to the city for auditions. Even while still in high school, Marilyn managed to secure several modest modeling assignments, marking the beginning of her burgeoning career. Additionally, she landed a minor role in the 1970 film The Owl and the Pussycat, a production starring the renowned Barbara Streisand. In this film, Streisand played the role of a part-time prostitute, providing Marilyn Chambers with an early taste of the film industry. As Marilyn's journey unfolded, she transitioned from her initial roles to more provocative endeavors. Her life took an unexpected turn when she became the iconic ivory soap commercial girl to later be recognized as an adult film icon. In the nascent stages of her modeling career, Marilyn Chambers achieved a significant milestone that would come to define a particular facet of her image, the iconic ivory soap girl. This role, undoubtedly her most successful and memorable, cast her as the face of purity on the Ivory Snow Soap Flake Box. In this distinctive portrayal, Marilyn posed as a mother cradling a baby, creating a wholesome tableau designed to market the soap as a mild and gentle option suitable for diapers and baby clothes. The irony of Marilyn, the epitome of purity, endorsing Procter & Gamble's Ivory Soap brand, was not lost on those who followed her career. This seemingly innocent and wholesome image stood in stark contrast to the later path Marilyn would tread in the adult film industry. The very symbol of maternal care and gentleness became a paradox when juxtaposed against her later involvement in explicit adult content. Interestingly, this irony became a noteworthy aspect of Marilyn Chambers' legacy, one that she embraced in her adult film endeavors. In a twist that could be deemed both cheeky and self-aware, almost every adult film featuring Marilyn Chambers prominently showcased a cameo of her iconic ivory snowbox. It was as though she deliberately confronted and subverted the expectations associated with her earlier image, turning the innocence of the ivory soap girl into a provocative and tongue-in-cheek symbol in the context of her adult film career. After her modest role in The Owl and the Pussycat, Marilyn Chambers found herself grappling with the challenges of securing more substantial roles in the film industry. Faced with the hurdles of conventional casting and the relentless pursuit of her acting dreams, Marilyn decided to make a bold move. In 1972, she made the pivotal decision to relocate to San Francisco, a city known for its progressive cultural landscape. In San Francisco, Marilyn sought opportunities to sustain her passion for acting while navigating the industry's challenges. It was during this period that she ventured into topless modeling to make ends meet, showcasing her resilience and determination to remain in the world of entertainment. 
The turning point in Marilyn's career came when she stumbled upon a casting call advertisement in the San Francisco Chronicle for what she believed to be a major motion picture. Eager for a breakthrough, Marilyn attended the audition, only to discover that it was for a groundbreaking and controversial project, a movie titled Behind the Green Door. The film was the brainchild of the pioneering producers Artie and Jim Mitchell, collectively known as the Mitchell Brothers. Recognizing Marilyn's striking resemblance to Cybill Shepard, the Mitchell brothers were captivated by her presence and offered her the lead role on the spot. This proposal presented Marilyn with a dilemma as she harbored concerns about the potential consequences of accepting a role in an adult film. She feared that such a decision might forever preclude her from landing roles in mainstream cinema. Despite her reservations, Marilyn found herself intrigued by the plot of Behind the Green Door and swayed by the unique opportunity, decided to negotiate the terms. She stipulated a substantial salary, a percentage of the film's gross, and a requirement that all actors be tested for venereal diseases, an unconventional demand for the time. The Mitchell brothers, initially taken aback by her condition, recognized in Marilyn the wholesome blonde they envisioned for the role. Eventually, they acceded to her terms, setting the stage for Marilyn Chambers' groundbreaking venture into the adult film industry, a move that would significantly impact her career trajectory and contribute to the evolution of the adult entertainment genre. Marilyn Chambers' foray into the adult film industry reached a pivotal moment with her role in Behind the Green Door. In this groundbreaking film, Marilyn portrays a wealthy San Francisco socialite who becomes the victim of a kidnapping, finding herself immersed in a series of intimate experiences within an elite North Beach club. Strikingly, Despite the significant narrative role she played, Marilyn's character was silent throughout the film, devoid of any spoken lines. Rather than considering this a limitation, Marilyn viewed it as an opportunity to showcase her acting prowess through nuanced facial expressions, relying solely on nonverbal communication to convey the depth of her character. After the filming concluded, Marilyn dropped a surprising bombshell on the Mitchell brothers. She revealed her identity as the Ivory Snow Girl, the face of purity on the soap flake box. This revelation became a strategic move on Marilyn's part, showcasing her ability to leverage her mainstream image to enhance her standing in the adult film industry. Seizing upon this information, the Mitchell brothers astutely used Marilyn's dual identity to their advantage in promoting the film. Marilyn, who had once symbolized purity and innocence as the ivory snow girl, was now billed as the 99 and 44 100% impure girl, cleverly referencing ivory snow's well-known tagline, 99 and 44 100% pure. This audacious marketing tactic created shockwaves in the advertising industry and added an intriguing layer to Marilyn's public persona. The repercussions of this revelation were swift and significant. Procter & Gamble, the company behind Ivory Snow, swiftly moved to distance itself from Marilyn Chambers, seeking to protect the wholesome image associated with its brand. Her image was promptly removed from the soapboxes, marking a clear break between Marilyn's past as the Ivory Snow Girl, and her newfound identity as an adult film actress. Marilyn Chambers' journey, marked by unexpected twists and calculated decisions, showcased her adaptability and strategic thinking in navigating the complexities of the entertainment industry. The juxtaposition of her roles, from the Ivory Snow Girl to the 99 and 44 100% Impure Girl, underscored the transformative nature of her career and the impact she had on both mainstream and adult entertainment realms. Following the initial success of Behind the Green Door, Chambers collaborated with the Mitchell brothers once again on The Resurrection of Eve. Although this film did not attain the same level of acclaim as its predecessor, it played a crucial role in solidifying Marilyn's image as the quintessential all-American girl next door. The Mitchell brothers assumed managerial roles in her career during this period, guiding her trajectory in the adult film industry.
Despite the relative success in adult films, Marilyn Chambers harbored aspirations for mainstream recognition. Eager to transition into more conventional roles, she parted ways with the Mitchell brothers and aligned herself with Chuck Trainer. Trainer, previously known for managing Linda Lovelace, the star of the infamous Deep Throat, became Marilyn's manager and, ultimately, her husband. Chuck Trainer's background in the adult film industry, particularly his association with Linda Lovelace, added a layer of complexity to Marilyn's professional and personal life. Lovelace, who gained notoriety for her role in Deep Throat, was also managed by Trainer during a tumultuous period. Marilyn's association with Trainer exposed her to the dynamics of the adult film industry beyond just her career. The transition from the Mitchell brothers to Chuck Trainer marked a pivotal moment in Marilyn Chambers' life. This shift reflected her determination to break free from the confines of adult entertainment and explore new opportunities in the mainstream. As she ventured into this uncharted territory, Marilyn's journey became a narrative of reinvention and resilience. Intriguingly, Marilyn's career trajectory from an ivory soap commercial girl to an adult film icon and her subsequent endeavors in mainstream entertainment provide a nuanced perspective on the challenges and transformations within the entertainment industry during that era. Marilyn Chambers' life story, spanning different genres and industries, serves as a compelling exploration of identity, ambition, and the evolving landscape of fame. Marilyn Chambers, fueled by aspirations beyond the adult film industry, set her sights on establishing herself as a mainstream actress. Her breakthrough role in Behind the Green Door had catapulted her to celebrity status, and she harbored hopes that this newfound recognition would pave the way for success outside the realm of adult entertainment. However, the reality proved to be a harsh contrast to her ambitions. Despite the commercial success of Behind the Green Door, Marilyn found herself facing significant obstacles in her pursuit of mainstream acting opportunities. The very success that had elevated her to stardom in the adult film industry became a double-edged sword. Hollywood, traditionally conservative and often quick to judge actors associated with adult content, seemed reluctant to accept Marilyn Chambers beyond the confines of her adult film persona. In a poignant twist of fate, Marilyn discovered that her success in the adult film industry hindered rather than helped her transition to mainstream acting. Despite the financial success of Behind the Green Door, the stigma associated with adult films overshadowed any potential she had as a serious actress. Hollywood's reluctance to embrace her beyond the label of an adult star became a defining challenge in Marilyn's career. Marilyn Chambers vocalized her frustrations, claiming that she was blackballed from Hollywood. Despite the undeniable success of Behind the Green Door, the prevailing perception within the industry was that it was merely a dirty movie. This narrow categorization of her work became a formidable barrier. Preventing Marilyn from being taken seriously as an actress in mainstream circles. The label of a star proved to be an enduring obstacle, one that Marilyn struggled to overcome throughout her career. Despite her talent, dedication, and the success of a high grossing film, Hollywood remained steadfast in its reluctance to acknowledge her beyond the realm of adult entertainment. The industry's narrow-minded view perpetuated an injustice, stifling Marilyn's potential and relegating her to a stereotype that overshadowed her broader capabilities. Throughout the 1970s, Marilyn Chambers faced a series of challenges and missed opportunities in her quest to establish herself as a mainstream actress. Despite her ambition and the potential she showcased, several promising roles eluded her grasp. One notable instance involved discussions with Hollywood heavyweights Jack Nicholson and Art Garfunkel regarding a potential role in the 1978 film Going South. However, the meeting took an unexpected turn when, instead of focusing on the cinematic aspects of the role, the interview became an uncomfortable encounter. 
Nicholson and Garfunkel allegedly diverted the conversation towards personal matters, incessantly questioning Marilyn about intimate details concerning her role in Behind the Green Door. The meeting, marred by inappropriate inquiries and a request for cocchini, left Marilyn Chambers incensed, prompting her to storm out. Another missed opportunity arose with the possibility of Marilyn being cast in the film Hardcore alongside George C. Scott. Intriguingly, this movie would have seen her portraying a character who was, in fact, an adult star. However, the casting director hesitated, believing that Marilyn's wholesome appearance did not align with the stereotypical image associated with adult film actresses. They expressed a desire for someone who fit the conventional mold, emphasizing the disconnect between Marilyn's real-life persona and the industry's expectations. Despite these setbacks in her pursuit of mainstream success, Marilyn Chambers did not let these disappointments define her career. While she may not have achieved the anticipated breakthrough in Hollywood as a serious actress, she found success in diverse roles outside the adult film industry. Marilyn's resilience and versatility allowed her to carve a niche in various projects, showcasing her abilities beyond the constraints of the narrow perceptions prevalent in the film industry. One notable success was her role in The Mind with the Dirty Man, a theater production in Las Vegas. Marilyn's compelling performance garnered favorable reviews, contributing to the play's remarkable run of 52 weeks. This achievement marked a significant milestone as it became the longest-running play in Las Vegas history at the time. In recognition of her contributions to the city's cultural scene, Marilyn was bestowed with a key to the city by the mayor. Undeterred by the challenges she faced in Hollywood, Marilyn also ventured into the world of musical theater. She starred in a short-lived off-Broadway musical review and later took the stage in a one-woman show in 1979, performed in Las Vegas. This production stirred controversy due to its inclusion of full-frontal nudity, challenging societal norms and expectations. Marilyn's ability to provoke discussions and push boundaries demonstrated her commitment to artistic expression. Beyond the stage, Marilyn Chambers made a significant impact on the music industry. In 1976, she achieved chart success with the disco single Benihana, showcasing her versatility as an entertainer. Additionally, Marilyn took on the role of lead singer in a country and western band named Haywire, performing gigs in and around Las Vegas. Marilyn's talents weren't confined to the stage and screen. She also delved into literature. In 1975, she penned her autobiography titled My Story, providing readers with a candid glimpse into her life. Collaborating with Xaviera Hollander, Marilyn co-authored Xaviera Meets Marilyn Chambers in 1977, offering a unique perspective on her experiences. Marilyn continued her literary pursuits by writing adult columns throughout her life further establishing her as a voice in discussions surrounding the adult's side. In 1981, Marilyn Chambers published two books that added to her literary legacy. Sensual Secrets offered readers her personal make-love tips, while the Illustrated Kama Sutra served as a make-love manual, showcasing her expertise in matters of intimacy. Marilyn Chambers' personal life was marked by three marriages, each contributing to the tapestry of her complex and evolving journey. Her first marriage was to Doug Chapin in 1971, a union that unfolded in the vibrant streets of San Francisco. The serendipitous encounter occurred as Doug played the bagpipes on the street, capturing Marilyn's heart. However, the marriage was relatively short-lived as they divorced in 1974, following her divorce from Chapin, Marilyn entered into a decade-long partnership with Chuck Trainer, who not only served as her manager, but also became her second husband. This union spanned ten years, during which Marilyn navigated the challenges and controversies surrounding her career. Chuck Trainer, previously involved with another adult film star, Linda Lovelace, 
played a pivotal role in shaping Marilyn's professional trajectory. By the mid-1980s, Marilyn found herself entrenched in a tumultuous period marked by the excessive consumption of alcohol and cocaine. However, a significant turning point occurred when she crossed paths with William Taylor Jr., a truck driver and recovering heroin addict. This encounter would lead to Marilyn's third marriage, highlighting the transformative power of love and support. William Taylor Jr. played a crucial role in Marilyn's life, encouraging her to break free from the destructive cycle of substance abuse. Embracing a healthier lifestyle, Marilyn entered Narcotics Anonymous under his influence, symbolizing a profound commitment to personal growth and recovery. Their relationship deepened, and they married in 1991, embarking on a new chapter together. During their marriage, Marilyn and William welcomed a daughter into their lives, adding a familial dimension to Marilyn's intricate narrative. However, despite their shared journey towards recovery, the marriage ultimately faced its challenges, culminating in a divorce in 1994. After stepping away from the adult film industry, Marilyn Chambers remained an active participant in autograph shows and conventions, where she became a cherished figure for fans who admired her contributions to the entertainment world. These events allowed her to connect with audiences and showcase a different side of herself beyond her roles in adult films. In a surprising shift, Marilyn delved into the realm of politics. In 2004, she entered the political arena by running for vice president on the personal choice party ticket, aligning herself with libertarian principles. This endeavor demonstrated her willingness to explore diverse facets of public life. Notably, in the 2008 elections, Marilyn continued her foray into politics by running as Charles J's running mate, participating as a write-in candidate in several states. While Marilyn Chambers had been a vocal advocate for sex positivity and defended her lifestyle choices throughout much of her career, there appears to have been a shift in her perspective towards the end of her life. In a 2004 interview, she expressed a more nuanced and reflective viewpoint on the adult film industry. Describing it as heartbreaking, Marilyn cautioned aspiring individuals against entering the industry, offering a candid piece of advice. My advice to somebody who wants to go into adult films is absolutely not. It leaves you kind of empty. So have a day job and don't quit it. This candid revelation showcased a more somber and introspective side of Marilyn Chambers, offering a glimpse into the toll that her experiences in the adult film industry had taken on her. The shift in her perspective underscored the complexities of her journey, revealing a depth beyond the public persona that had defined much of her career. On April 12, 2009, the world received the news of Marilyn Chambers's untimely death when her 17-year-old daughter discovered her lifeless body in their home near Santa Clarita, California. The circumstances surrounding her passing added a layer of poignancy to the already complex narrative of her life. Marilyn Chambers, at the age of 56, had left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. The subsequent autopsy aimed to unravel the mystery behind her sudden demise. The examination revealed the presence of painkillers and antidepressants in Marilyn's system, though the quantities were insufficient to be the direct cause of death. Instead, the autopsy pointed to a cerebral hemorrhage and an aneurysm linked to heart disease as the underlying factors. The findings shed light on the health challenges Marilyn faced in her final moments, contributing to a more comprehensive understanding of the circumstances leading to her passing. Despite the hardships Marilyn Chambers encountered in her later years, including struggles with substances and a lack of breakthrough success as a mainstream actress, her legacy as an icon in the adult film industry endured. Her impact on the world of entertainment was profound, and her contributions to adult films, especially in groundbreaking works like Behind the Green Door, solidified her place in the annals of cinematic history. Marilyn Chambers's journey, marked by triumphs and tribulations, underscores the complexities inherent in a life lived in the public eye.
Her passing marked the end of an era, prompting reflections on her influence, the challenges she faced, and the enduring legacy she left behind. Marilyn Chambers, despite the hurdles she encountered, remains eternally linked to the cultural landscape, a symbol of an era in which boundaries were pushed and societal norms were challenged. What do you think about the sad life of Marilyn Chambers? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.